Hi, I'm Chinmayi, and uh, I have a startup called Sakshin. I've been running the start uh, startup for another uh, around uh, one and a half years now. I'm here to share uh, a few of my experiences and a few of my experiments which I did uh, with my colleagues. Uh, usually, it's very hard to hire uh, talent for startup, and it, um, most of you know that it's even harder to retain talent. And based on the salaries, it's very hard to retain or hire uh, hire for startup. Basically, you have very limited budget. So how do you retain your employees in that case? Uh, I did something wherein I started with one employee. Now I have six employees. Not that I pay a lot of uh, salaries to these employees, but there are other things I do which attracts them to work for me. So this is what I'm going to share with you. Uh, the first thing I started uh, realizing is that uh, I cannot treat my startup uh, colleagues as employees. I have to treat them like family. I have to treat them like friends. I have to understand that they have their own constraints. They have a family. They have aspirations. They have goals. So uh, I understood that when I understand their goals, their aspirations, then I would be able to align their work according to their goals and aspirations, which motivates them to work more with me and uh, which has uh, pushed them to work extra long hours. Even though uh, I, I do not ask them to work, I give them flexi work timings. I do not uh, tell them come at 9 and leave at 5 or 6 or 8 which is usually a startup norm. I don't do that. What I do is I give them a flexi time. I tell them that be here from 11 to 6, but beyond that, you can work here or you can go home and work. And even Saturday, Sundays, I don't make them work. This motivates them to work better. <laughs> On the contrary to what we feel, um, giving them flexi hours and understanding that they have other things to take care of apart from this work has motivated them better. Also, uh, when I've aligned work with them, they come and discuss with me what additional features they want to add to a product. They come and discuss what uh, additionally they would like to learn and how to make the product better. And we have group discussions where people sit and you know they say, ma'am, we want to do this technology, or uh, Chinmay, we want to do this technology. How can we align with the startup goals? How can we make our product better? These are the things that have come out but when I've started considering them and their goals, their aspirations. The other thing, uh, these are just a few random things. So, oh, sorry. The other thing I've found is uh, most people have multi dimensions now. Not, uh, we are not unidimensional at all. We have some creative process. like. One of my um, uh, colleagues, she is a cartoonist. She's a, a sketcher. I found that very intri in, uh, intriguing. And I wanted to see uh, her sketches. And she one day brought them to me. And then I had this idea. Why don't I use her to market my product? So I just gave her uh, a uh, freelance work, saying that whenever you have free time, just dabble something. It, which is in alignment with the product. So what came out was this marketing thing. Though she was not a marketing uh, person, what she helped create was a, a series of marketing ads which I could run over Facebook. Um, though her primary job was as a developer, this encouraged her to not only work uh, on whatever she was assigned on, but also add value to the company. And also, this told her that she belongs to the company. And she keeps, uh, though she was an intern for some time, she was not a uh, complete employee, she keeps coming back and contributing to the company. Though I don't pay her as such, but she's interested in what I do. She has al aligned her interest in what I do. Then there was this other employee of mine who was very interested in dance. OK, I couldn't do it much in terms of 
promoting uh, her dance career or getting her enrolled to classes what i did was i just connected her to a dancer friend of mine so these are small things you can take care of you have friends of friends you have networks from which you can actually build the talents you can build the dimensions you can build their primary interests so that way they are more connected to you they become family to you they become friends to you they get more interested in what you do then uh sorry another way you could uh, interest is most of the uh, people who come to a startup have a set of things they want to learn most people want to learn something or the other either in terms of management or in terms of development or coding and um, identify this see what uh, you can given terms of challenges like i have one of my employees uh, who is very interested in mobile uh, games development so what i do is i i um, design uh, my products in such a way that there are certain elements like probably an accelerometer or there are certain ui elements which could enhance my product also give him that extra set of skills that my, uh, my employee can take back and use in his uh, passion and then uh, i there's another employee of mine who had no self confidence as such but then uh, i saw that potential that she could be a great uh, speaker in in a way a great organizer so what i did was i started pushing her towards attending conferences like this i started asking her to mingle with people i started giving her tasks wherein i said okay go to a conference just make two three friends and come back so this increased her self confidence also what i did uh, i what i do with most of my developers is i encourage them to go to conferences i encourage them to go to hackathons i have uh, an internal i had an internal hackathon as well and it was very successful and they loved it like uh, the, they had two products which they did in an uh, in a gap of around 8 uh, hours or so they built two mobile apps one was to take care of mentally retarded kids the other uh, targeted um, i think uh, to uh, enlighten people about the rules the traffic rules and all that so when you push them towards things like this when you push them to an outer world where uh, they have to go and uh, do things that increases the self confidence that increases the skills one of my employees i pushed her to go to an indic hackathon the google indic hackathon uh, i told her learn it it's a very essential skill we wanted to do some indic apps and i just told her just go to the hackathon and just go there and be yourself do an app if if you win if you lose it doesn't matter just go and as a result of it she won and now she could wholly solely take care of the app i don't have to even interfere in how she does so this is how you can motivate you can and also now she keeps coming and asking me ma'am are there any more hackathons that i could go to or are there any other apps that i could build in that way so this is small things that you can take care of then also uh, yeah uh, what i did last week was i went to my uh, college i went to my alma mater and i conducted a hackathon for, i'm a part of this group called uh, random hacks of kindness so uh i got my employees involved with me i told them guys i'm going to my uh, college i'm going to conduct a hackathon uh, please come it's just going to be one sunday i know it's a lot for me to ask you and for you to come but just come they came and then uh, they mentored those students to build apps and uh, to build technologies at the end of the hackathon uh i saw a huge flow in energy in these uh people they will they came back to me and told me uh, ma'am we are not doing enough uh, the energy of these students the way they are learning it's so inspiring for us it's so uh, so much uh, i want to go back and work from now i want to go back and work on this idea for now i can work the entire week on this idea and finish it that's the kind of take back that they had so 
these are small things we can push we can push them to learn few things or just ga- gain that self confidence and um, get them engaged in you then uh, yes another thing i did was whenever i created something along with my employees what i did was i never published as this technology or this app has been created by my company that sakshin i said this was created by so and so and i posted it on social networking sites i posted it uh, in groups where we were uh, displaying i said uh, me another employee or a tester or a res- designer who was involved all the names came up there and also when we were showcased a lot of our apps are showcased on newspapers and even then uh, when i was speaking about the app and the creators i didn't speak about my company i spoke about those developers what happened was these developers went back developers or designers went back saw the names in the papers or uh, social media and that added that uh, in, that added their enthusiasm they're like they were so happy they were sharing it on uh, to other people they were sharing it on on their timelines and they were so happy to be involved in uh, something like this they had that belongingness so they would be working more with me on such things even though i don't have to uh, pull them now i don't have to push them to do things yeah yeah yes yes so the thing is that how much of uh, belongingness you build with the developer if you approach my developers they would say no to you i kn- i have that much confidence uh, in them because i've given them a complete wholesome package it's not just <coughs> one sharing of credit or one instance i'm doing it over and over again i've been doing it for the past one and a half years for even smaller or bigger things they've done so i've given them skill sets they have not thought of like uh, there was a tester of mine she was very skilled tester but she said i want to develop something in my so i said fine uh, just um, start with basic html with js let's write a tizen app and she just learned that and she wrote a tizen app so the joy she gets by just learning those small skill sets from uh, from me or uh, the way i tell them to do things uh, not tell them and in fact i just suggest them i just tell them uh, like uh, you could do this you could do this it's up to you whether you want to take it up or and do that's on them so that kind of engagement makes the belongingness more i know i understand so that's why i don't um, so when you say superstars or when you hire them that's the problem you don't build belongingness with them when you build belongingness there would be no such issues and even if they go i would be more than happy that they are being approached by another startup and they getting more hike or more facilities that's good for them so uh, yeah you've been speaking about retaining employees yes how about the hiring factor itself how do you convince someone that they're getting something for low pay but they'll be having the high pay so uh the way i hire employees is uh i don't initially i did that going on go post on hasgeek go post on uh, uh, occ or things like that or uh, put it on your facebook page now i don't hire employees like that i hire through references so uh, someone who has worked with me uh, in the past or with this company refers to me someone else I just test their skill sets. I see if they can grasp, they can learn, or they have those skill sets uh, in the beginning, and then I hire uh, that way. That has uh, led to better hiring for me. I've seen that from Hasgeek or from OCC, I've not got such greater results than what I've got right now. Now I have people waiting to work with me, but I do not have work to give them. So that's one tip you can take back. always try to get people through my first employee was referred through one of my previous uh, colleagues uh, she was his niece or something like that but she turned out to be amazing 
So it's not like all these references which come are bad. Uh, you can get some good references to them, and I suggest you go with that. So you'll have a more personal touch. Yes, yes, yes. And um, sorry. Yes, this is very important. Ah, yes. Yes. Huh. So, uh, okay, I've had an, uh, uh, my tester leave. She worked with me for around 11 months, and then she left. I still work with her uh, in a freelance basis. It depends on uh, whether my employee has a good relation with me, they, w on what basis they're living. If, they, if it's a very rational reason, then uh, I have no right to retain them, right? So uh, if it is a irrational reason, fine, I wouldn't continue with them. If it's a rational reason, why not? Because they already have that belongingness. They're already speaking about me. They're already with me. So why not? A very uh, important part of retaining or motivating employees is celebrate. Celebrate your small successes. Celebrate. Uh, your hard work done. Celebrate uh, your uniqueness. Like I, we celebrated Women's Day because we had a majority women in our company. So celebrate these small things. They matter um, to share. Whenever someone does good work, it's good to motivate them by saying, you've done good work, by telling them that, uh, thank you for doing this good work. And even if it means going an extra mile, do that. So uh, the hackathon I spoke to you about where they traveled with me to Mysore, uh, the developers, after finishing the hackathon, they said, ma'am, uh, it was 11 o'clock in the night or something in the, uh, of that sort. They said, ma'am, we want to go back to Bangalore because we want to have a night ride. I was working continuously for two days, and I had no sleep. But I drove that night because I knew it would give them that extra sense of happiness, the extra sense of uh, celebration. So this is important that you celebrate with them. OK, the last thing that I think is very important, or I've seen as very important, is uh, the way you have your office. Make it a little bit creative. Make it interesting for them to come every day. Have uh, probably a, ja a jar of chocolates or chips or have uh, your office, OK, I'll show you my office. It's a garage starter, but this is one of my, sorry. It's a garage starter, but this is a part of my office. It's a part, it's an outdoor place where people can sit, discuss, can have lunch, can work. My office is not structured in a way that you have desks and you come and work there. You can sit anywhere and work. You can watch the rain outside or go and walk in the garden. So these are things which would motivate them to come to the workplace and work. Uh, this is what I had from my experience to add. So it's a, yes. That's a very good thing, but be careful what, uh, whom you're sharing it with. Do you trust them and how long you've been with them? Uh, OK, if you are going uh, to uh, hire a developer who is very competent or hire a hustler who is very competent, that's fine. But it's a personal objectification. Uh, so I, I'm. I had an employee uh, whom I wanted to share my stake with. Because I trusted her, I knew she considered the office just as much as I considered it. So I had no qualms sharing it with her. Unfortunately, she left before I could share. Yeah. Yes.
Yes. You have to be a little bit intelligent in the way you manage your money and the way you're paying your uh, resources and the way you're hiring them. Uh, you need to hire only as much as you need. And um, you have to be ca uh, compensating. Probably you cannot pay as much as any other company would be paying. So you need to see what way you can compensate to a developer. So this is uh, something where you need to use your intelligence and a little bit of... Uh, common sense also, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, his question was, uh, how do you, uh, what, uh, how do you be? My question is like uh, when you started your firm one and a half years back, so how you started, how you arranged the uh, budget and cash flow and uh, because you, at that time you didn't, did not have any sale of apps or other things. So what's the plan if someone has to start like that, so how can he do? So initially you need to have certain amount of buffer, you need to calculate how much you would need until you make some money through apps or clients or services or whatever it is. So you need to calculate that and uh, yeah, there of course you can always ask your friends and family to invest in, in the initial phases and do things like that. But uh, otherwise, yeah, you have to keep a buffer. When you're hiring, uh, you told me about a personal touch to it because you have references hiring and stuff. Do you also have a certain age group in which you hire and you're comfortable working with or something of the sort? Not really. If they're comfortable with me, I'm comfortable with them. I had uh, one, I interviewed one person who was younger to me, but then he asked me I, uh, that, uh, what's your age? And uh, I asked him, do you have any questions? He said, I did not expect you to be so young. So. If he does not have the comfort to work with me, then uh, I, I cannot. Otherwise, I, I do not have any preference in terms of age. I do not have any preference in terms of qualifications. Yes, I do have preference in terms of uh, whether they can do the work or not, whether they have that capacity to learn, uh, they have that uh, eagerness to learn or not. That's what I look for when I'm hiring. Pardon me? How typical? Okay. So, the person knows coding or not? The person can get the work done. Yes, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I base my questions uh, not with a general flow. I see the resume, I see the projects, I see what they've done as previous work, and I also make them, I mean, for developers, I make them write code then and there. That's the best judge of things. So if they can't write code, you can't hire them. Simple as that. And then uh, that's how I do the hiring. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, while interviewing a guy from IIT, okay, uh, he we are trying to um, interview him for internship, and uh, I asked him, okay, do, do you know sorting algorithms? Okay, uh, he said, yeah, sort binary search, binary sort, uh, bubble sort, and all the names. He said, okay, can you write quick sort? Um, so he opened, he started writing. And uh, in the, after 15 minutes of trying, he told, I can tell you the algorithm, but I can't write the code. So it's as simple as that. I mean, just ask him to code, right? Anything. You will get to know in 15 minutes how he thinks. And on a, one occasion, I got a guy who was saying, I'm a Java developer. I have two years of experience. I asked him to write a list in Java, and he started writing in C. 
so it's not difficult to judge uh, once you ask them to actually write code because that's what they will doing in your startup anyways i'm sure you would have similar experience yes yes i i've had uh, people coming and telling me i'm uh, awesome python developers and when i ask them to write a line of code they fail there so yeah any other questions you have anyone uh, from a startup community and wants to share their experiences i know i put in some some things but this is a discussion so someone wants to add to this you want to add i believe when you are hiring a developer uh, it's better you cross check his social networks also and he must have a github profile at least okay, uh, unless until unless he's not in github profile then he's not a developer at least he's not a professional developer at least from in, in case of my knowledge so uh, i wouldn't agree to that actually uh, not having a github repo doesn't signify anything and uh, yeah even i've had uh, amazing developers who don't have a github i mean it just depends on see uh, professionally i never had a github repo until i actually started contributing to barcamp Uh, app that's the only github repo i have actually because all my work was proprietary before this so i wouldn't really say i mean it's i think it's a bonus point but it's not a negative point that you don't have a, a github repo as much as it's a high top coder profile and you go to his platform or otherwise or he actually asked me what github was <laughs> <laughs> The, the topic of discussion was uh, say uh, how to motivate a startup right uh, how do you keep yourself motivated you know okay you're the boss you're the employee you're the chaparasi you're the security guard everything you pay you don't pay yourself a salary uh, you sh- you try to share each and every part of your uh, life with your uh, team not the employee with the team so how do you keep yourself motivated in terms of uh, morally financially and work wise morally uh, very truly i have a network of support a network of entrepreneurs who uh, i have a chat with whenever i'm feeling that i'm not going anywhere or i'm losing focus so these guys are so motivated themselves that uh, whenever i have a chat uh, with these people i get motivated also i have a set of friends very important that you have a startup you need to have an system of support without that i mean i don't know if you are really good maybe you'll survive but uh, i would recommend a system of support before you start up have a system of support have very good friends whom you can call and tell oh i'm doing very early badly at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock in the night and have friends who will tell you no you'll do it so it's, so you need to build that that's very important and uh, financially again make sure you have enough money for yourself through whatever phase you are thinking of and if you don't have enough money make sure you make that money from that point on either you take up something random and uh, just build it for the sake of money or ask your family friends if they trust you enough to give you that money so that that's one way you can do it and with work always i, I for me i've taken up challenges in in a way that okay i'm not done uh, from past one and a half let's say two years i think my learning curve has been uh, 300 to 400 percent uh, i was with nokia i ha- i learned one technology qt and c++ and then i left nokia and i think i learned a whole lot of things i learned javascript i learned html i learned python i learned uh, writing android uh, programs <laughs> then now i i'm learning ios so when i am setting a uh, learning curve for my employees so i do the same thing i set a learning curve for myself that's how you can go ahead Uh, how do you keep your company flat and uh, still you know i mean people are more concerned about their job in the sense th- i'm talking about the right balance between you know flatness and uh, people delivering 
what they are meant to deliver. I mean, where is the bar? So, uh, one, involving your company, involving your employees in what you are doing, what is your vision, uh, is very important. It makes them understand where you are going and where you are. I know it's a, lo a huge amount of reality to share with them. It's scary. It's scary for them also because they are, their jobs are based on your startup. But then it also motivates them to work. Second, you ask them to take initiative. In my, in my case, in my startup, what I do is I tell them, see, these are my uh, set amount of timelines. You tell me what you can take up. And I've seen that uh, I do the scrum mode. And so I give them complete freedom of what they can take up and how much time they want to take for each of it. But, that I, but then um, you have to regulate a little bit. Uh, I know it's scrum, but uh, people say it's scrum, but if you regulate. But then you have to stick to your deadlines. So, But when you give them this that these are the deadlines and this is the work that has to be done, I've seen most of the times they're so self-motivated that they pick up tasks that are quite uh, n uh, needed for the deadlines to be completed, and they complete within deadlines. Most of the times, they uh, work faster than I work. So uh, this is one thing you can use. You can ask them to be, you can enable them to uh, take up responsibility. Uh, like in a startup, like not every day is a busy day. You know, I mean, there are there are days or months actually when there is no work. You know, I mean, I I I think it is really difficult to manage your team when there is no work. No, I mean, see, uh, maybe you are pivoting, stuff like that, or you are in a phase of change, or stuff like that. You can always build products. I don't think there okay. would be a day when you can't build products. <laughs> I, I, I have not seen that. Like okay. Lean period, at least. So. Okay. I mean, maybe mostly in the ideation phase when. So one thing, uh, so I work at a startup uh, and uh, we have like about 15 developers and we are always looking for good people, right? So one thing we noticed by hiring developers is uh, we have so many candidates and so many interviews and so many developer hours are wasted. So what we have done is we have put up like problems, uh, problems or uh, like challenges online, like uh, just on our company website. So if you want to work with us, solve this challenge and then we will talk. Like they, they send the code and we see actually how, how quality is the code and how good is is, I mean thinking and all and most of these challenges which have put up are the future request which are on the product roadmap we have like we need to build this and if someone is actually building and coming and you know applying for an interview that's cool yeah that's really a very brilliant idea <laughs> okay okay thank you